all right, let's jump in with um, uh, with really uh, just a quick update on the state of uh, police defunding in America. So one of the cities most affected by BLM last year, and the city maybe most affected by a spike in crime over the last two years, has been uh, the city of Chicago. Uh, this is shitty, a city where we saw... Uh, uh, significant uh, calls for cutting police budgets, significant calls for, for reducing the power of police, the, the influence of police, the, the reach of police uh, in, uh, in our cities. And, um, of course, in 2020, uh, during uh, when crime was going through the roof and uh, BLM was out in the streets and the police were being chased by BLM, it should be the other way around, but it wasn't, looting, was all over Michigan Avenue, if you remember. Uh, BLM then said looting is just a form of redistribution of wealth. This is reparations. This is a good thing. Uh, completely screwed. The, the mayor, uh, mayor of, of Chicago, Lightfoot, uh, uh, proposed at the time cutting the police budget by $80 million. $80 million. Well, now, as murders have hit a 27 year high, 27 year high. Where would that put us uh, in terms of uh, 1990-something, uh, 1990 right? Um, so, uh, yeah, 1994. So, uh, 1984, uh, murders actually peaked in Chicago, I think, in 91. But uh, since 1994, they've been steadily in decline. It's been a phenomena. It, been, it has been amazing, the, the reduction in crime all over the United States, and particularly in the big cities like New York and Chicago, and for, for, for 25 years approximately, uh, crime was declining when, when Trump was elected and announced there was carnage in the streets of America, some of the most peaceful, peaceful uh, less violent times in all of American history. Anyway, as Chicago is hitting right now a 27-year high, uh, er erasing, erasing, 27 years of, of achievement, of, of, of reduction, systematic reduction in crime generally, and in particular in murder rates. Uh, uh, Mayor Lightfoot is panicking and uh, running to the feds and asking uh, Attorney General uh, Mary Garland to send additional federal law enforcement officials to the city. We can't, she says, we can't continue to endure the level of violence that we are now experiencing. Oh my God, the world is crazy. This is nuts. What's going to happen? Um, and, and she's actually, actually, actually asking for, a, uh, for federal aid. You remember when um, uh, Trump was pilloried by, by Democratic mayors for, for suggesting federal aid uh, during the BLM riots and during the crime waves that followed, preceded and followed? Well, now these same uh, Democratic mayors are, are requesting aid because they realize that it's out of control and now there's no politics to play. Now it's all about just trying to reduce crime. Uh, it truly is one of the, the last two years will go down as one of the, a, a true tragedy where at least in parts of the United States, again, these record achievements of lowering crime that we have experienced for 25 years, or more than 25 years, really since 1981, for, so for 30 years, have now been reversed. And we're seeing an uptick in many cities around the country, an uptick on, and generally in property crime and other forms of crime, and in particular in murder. Um, we are returning to the 1970s and 80s, where, where crime was out of control in this country. Just... Uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, one other example of this is, is uh, New York, which again has, has seen a dramatic increase in crime. And as a consequence, I think of that, just elected a Democratic mayor who is very much a centrist and a law and order Democrat and is committed to increasing uh, police budgets and increasing the, um, uh, you know, the presence of police. Uh, and he was a former policeman, Eric Adams, a former Republican. And uh, he's just been elected uh, to, uh, to New York's mayor. And you can see that the electorate is um, rebelling against kind of the, 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 the far left's agenda, uh, as expressed last year in particular, of defunding the police, shutting them down, eliminating them. I mean, as you know, even in Minnesota, the electorate voted against 
uh, doing away with the police force in Minneapolis, even though, uh, it, you know, a, a year ago it looked like, or two, a year and a half ago, it looked like that was for certain going to pass. And yet the election in November, people don't actually want to live in crime-ridden neighborhoods. And uh, most people, most including people who live in those neighborhoods, realize the crucial importance importance of um, of the police and the value the police actually add. In San Francisco, uh, you know, San Francisco, God, what a tragedy. I mean, San Francisco is arguably one of the most beautiful cities in the world. The whole Bay Area is just beautiful. The, the views, the scenery, the Golden Gate uh, Bridge, uh, the, the sky rises, the sky, uh, skyline in uh, downtown um, San Francisco, the, 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 the hills driving the windy roads. It's just, if you've never been to San Francisco, it's definitely a place to go. It's, it's beautiful. It's inspiring. And of course, in the last few years, it, uh, in the last 10, 15 years, it's been a mecca for, for high tech. It used to be Silicon Valley, but a lot of the high tech companies have moved north to San Francisco. Uh, uh, Twitter uh, and, and many other companies have their headquarters there, a lot of startups. It's a gorgeous place. And yet, uh, even when I lived in the Bay Area in the 1990s, it, it was a haven for the homeless. Um, and the homeless were particularly aggressive in San Francisco, particularly uh, aggressive towards passerbys, and, and particularly, I don't know, uh, um, offensive you know, in, in just their attitude and, and their behavior. But it's only gotten worse. And uh, a few years ago, I was in San Francisco, and I was attending an event at the Tenderloin District, and at a theater, there, there was a, a comedy show my son was in, and I was attending the comedy show. And um, it just was unbelievable. I'd, I'd never seen it like this. Basically, this is two blocks away from Union Square, the heart of San Francisco. Uh, it, it's just a, an encampment. A, the filth, hundreds of, um, of homeless people, again, aggressive, uh, uh, shooting up on the streets, uh, dozens and dozens and dozens of them in this area of, of, I don't know, four blocks. And I had a walk through in order to get to this theater. It, it was not particularly fun. Um, but even driving in the streets, they run into the streets. Some of them are obviously mentally uh, out of it. Some of them are just on drugs. You, you, you're afraid of, you're going to run one of them over. It, 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 it's just horrible. It's just horrible. Uh, and, uh, you know, business owners, forget it. I mean, nobody wants to go and, 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 uh, to that district and buy anything and shop or anything like that. So businesses, is, businesses are collapsing in the area because of just a mass of homelessness. Uh, there. Anyway, the mayor of San Francisco, again, a Democrat, but uh, a, a more of a, probably more of a moderate Democrat, uh, by the name of London Breed, uh, and she is, uh, she's declared a state of emergency in the city's Tenderloin district, that is these, this area where all the homeless are. And she basically is, is encouraging the police to go and clean it up and, and basically get, uh, move the drug addicts, I guess, to an area where they can be treated and they can be dealt with, clean it up, prevent people from, from, from defecating and from sleeping right there in the street. That's the other thing. You had to walk around all the human poop all over the place. And it's one thing to try to evade uh, dog poop, but human poop. Um, and it's uh, so finally, finally, maybe San Francisco is going to do something about some of its homeless problem. It's still not a long term solution. It's still not a sustainable solution that will only come when affordable housing is actually built, real affordable housing. And that will only happen when people in the street expect it to, to work and expect it to do something in order to get that housing. Uh, but, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's interesting. Now, in San Francisco, the uh, progressive uh, prosecutor who uh, famously is not prosecuting shoplifting, and as a consequence, in San Francisco, there's this epidemic, if you will, of shoplifting. Um, so, uh, you know, in, um, uh, in San Francisco, uh, the reason is this epidemic is the, the district attorney has basically declared shoplifting not a crime. 
Anyway, the district attorney came out and he denounced Bree, the, the mayor's declaration, right? So he opposes the state of emergency in the Tenderloin. I, I guess he wants people, uh, people there, uh, you know, he wants them just to, just to live there and just to, just to, just to destroy the place. Uh, he, he said jailing people who have mental health struggles, putting them, uh, uh, putting who are vending hot dogs and other people in cages will not solve the problem. Cages, right? They are only, uh, right, uh, and so, you know, it, it's, it, it's still a struggle in San Francisco, even though the mayor might be a little bit better. It is still a struggle given the district, uh, you know, the attorney general of San Francisco uh, who is the guy who is supposed to prosecute people, uh, is, I guess, really refusing to act. So it's going to be interesting. We'll watch what happens in San Francisco, whether anything positive comes of this. But it is interesting, uh, this conflict in the left between the moderates who actually want to win and who actually want, I think, in some way, honestly, want to create a better quality of life, uh, but who are just dominated by altruism, and the, the far left, who is completely wacky, nihilistic, doesn't care one iota about quality of life, uh, uh, is completely bought into uh, altruism all the way to its nihilistic conclusion. That struggle within among the Democrats is fascinating, and we're seeing playing out. We'll see it play out in New York. We'll see it play out in Chicago. We'll see it play out in San Francisco, uh, Portland, Seattle. Many of our cities uh, will experience this dichotomy of uh, people who get elected who are going to be the more moderate, uh, but the, the, the grassroots who are far more uh, extreme and nutty and, and uh, nihilistic. Um, and, you know, that, that'll determine to a large extent the, 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 the fate of the Democratic Party. The other thing that'll determine the fate of the Democratic Party is, of course, the Republican Party. Thank you for listening or watching the Iran Brooks Show. If you'd like to support the show, we make it as easy as possible for you to trade with me. You get value from listening. You get value from watching. Show your appreciation. You can do that by going to yourownbookshow.com slash support, by going to Patreon, subscribe star, locals, and just making a appropriate contribution uh, on any one, of those, uh, any one of those channels. Also, if you'd like to see the Your Own Book Show grow, please consider sharing our content and of course, subscribe press that little bell button right down there on YouTube so that you get an announcement when we go live. And for you, those of you who are ready subscribers and those of you who are ready supporters of the show, thank you. I very much appreciate it.